the best thing I could say about it, you might laugh out loud like I did. Uh, did you laugh out loud? I was, like, yeah. I, I was shocked. I was like, they just did that. I, I can't believe they just did that. Y'all are just stupid. This is crazy. I was like, I know you did not Batman this shit right now. <laughs> Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. Let's go ahead and get into this review right now. You ready? Sir? I'm ready. All right. All right, folks. Before there was Karen, there was Cruella DeVille. <laughs> right there from the 1961 classic 101 Dalmatian. I say that she is the Karen before Karen was ever invented. She is the Uber Karen because she's the ultimate self-entitled bitch. <laughs> I mean, she's on some demented shit. And she is still my favorite Disney villain. She wants to kill puppies, man. Not just one, not just two, but a hundred of them. As many as she can get her hands on. As many as she can get her hands on. That is some crazy shit right there. One hundred puppies now. So I can just rain that little adorable ass necks. I, I think it's mitigated by the fact that she wants their fur. Like, she doesn't want to kill them just to do it. She has a purpose in mind. It's a f***ed up purpose. <laughs> oh, I, no argument here. She wants to commit puppy <laughs> genocide to make a coat that that bitch is going to wear one time and then toss that shit away once she's done at the at the party or the fashion show. I don't know how the hell. I'm, I mean, 60s is a different time. You would never survive in Austin wearing a puppy no, coat. No, of course not. Hell, you, can, you can't get by wearing an actual coat that people used to wear. That is some demented shit that she is on right there. I thought Gaston was out of control. <laughs> he is. With his vanity, man. You know, but at least at least he's trying to kill a beast. <laughs> Cruella's trying to kill 100 puppies, man. It's the same amount of fur. It's the same. Yeah, but what is at least it's a beast. He might be a cool beast, but it's a beast. She's trying to kill baby animals. For, at least Gaston's up for a challenge. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gaston has got so he fighting something that can fight back. This bitch here, man, nah, nah, man. I wish. I, sometimes I wish her and Gaston could get together. They'd be the ultimate Ken and Karen. Be calling police on black people all the time. Police be getting called on them because they always scream at each other at home. <laughs> here's the fun. Here's the, here's the, the the messed up thing on my part. I still got to respect her though, man. Oh, you you, you kind of do. I got to respect her. Don't give a f this man. None. I never seen someone walk up in someone's I, house. I never seen I never seen someone walk up into someone's house and disrespect everything. Everything. You, <laughs> the furniture. She even told the food. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then gonna turn around and act like you're the asshole. <laughs> Why are you inconveniencing me? For heaven's sakes, where are they? Uh, after all, is there a woman in all this wretched world who doesn't? I love the way both the dudes in the house, Pongo and the husband, like, man, get this bitch out. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is growling. I know. I'm playing the trombone as loud as I can. <laughs> Try to drown her out. Damn, yeah. girl, take a hit. <laughs> yeah. You know I don't like her. Get the f out the house. <laughs> yeah, but, but Roger, he's scared of it too. Yeah, that's why he's up there in the attic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play this song I got for him. I'm gonna play it from up there. <laughs> she, she ain't gonna beat my ass. <laughs> yeah, that's listen. That's a hard one to top right there. Although yeah, I give I give the Glenn close for being close. You know what? Yeah, I started rewatching this movie today too. The remake. And, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, I didn't care for this movie at all when it came out. But rewatching it, I was like. Movie's okay. It sticks very close to the source material, but yeah. Glenn Close is amazing. Glenn Close makes an amazing <laughs> Cruella Deville. Yeah. I wasn't crazy about the movie because just the movie came top, but I give it to Glenn Close. Like Cruella Deville is my favorite Disney villain. Mm -hmm. So if you can come up here and make me feel like you did as good of a job, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I reluctantly had to give it to her. I'm like, I don't want to. I know. Same here. Same here. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this cash grab. Let me watch this again. And I was like, shit. She's giving me that that same feeling coming in being completely oh, disrespectful, geez. being yep. bitchy to everybody. Don't give a. F <laughs> <laughs> I've asked myself, how did this bitch become such a bitch? How 
I, I, what drove a woman to want to do puppy mass murder for a piece of clothing? <laughs> I mean, like, you got to say, all right, you know what? You might not have asked for it. You might not even want it, but you want it sometimes. Well, like, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like she's rich, demented. She's bought everything else. Yeah. She's looking for a new thrill. And she's entitled. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. of course. Yeah. But, hey, you know what? Like they, <laughs> It ain't that complicated. <laughs> like Disney said, you don't know what you want. The reason why you didn't ask about it because you didn't know. <laughs> Allow us to come in and fulfill that wish mm -hmm. for you that you know you never knew you had in your heart right Let there. Let us fill in the gaps. Let's go ahead and take a look at the prequel to Cruella. Back when she was just Ella, was trying to do the right thing, trying to be a good person. Oh, but for some reason, society just wouldn't let her do it. it. Nope. Society broke her. <laughs> They said, you know what, why do we want her to be all right when we know good and goddamn well if she's going to be a good person, we ain't going to get no good movie from her. <laughs> Somebody got to kill puppies out there to make that movie that everybody knows and loves. Folks, here is the trailer for Cruella, and we'll be right back with our review. Don't worry, there's lots more bad things coming. Perhaps. 101 Dalmatians is in my top three of my favorite Disney animated movies of all time. So if you're like me, it's probably hard to go into this movie and not be biased. You know, you have to look at this movie as something completely unrelated to the original. If you want to use words, I, I don't know, reimagining, if you wanted to do that. That's how I looked at it. Yeah. Otherwise, this is going to suffer from major Star Wars syndrome, where everything connects to a point where it's just it's ridiculous. It, it, you know, everything connects to a point where it's forced and disingenuous. Uh, and worst of all, everything we know about the character now, every, that, you know, everything that's classic about this character, mm -hmm. everything that's iconic about this character, all of a sudden it has to fit into the origin story. Mm -hmm. it, ha it has to be there since the beginning. You know, what I, what, what I love about Cruella, I hate her. But I do. I gotta admit, she's got a she's got a great sense of fashion. She, you know, I, I I love her bold fashion statement, especially the hair. Yeah, yeah, love the hair, love that coat, love the coat with, I, the, with the red lining. I was like, that is badass. I, I'm I'm not even into fur, but that's nice. Mark, but yeah, the hair. Yeah, I thought that was gonna be followed by a honey. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, <laughs> that coat, that red lining. You were going in. <laughs> You turned into a fashion hey, critic man, instead of a movie I, critic I, for a I, second. I didn't recognize it. Yeah, man. I looked at that hair and I always assumed that, you know, she was just a trendsetter. She did her own thing. That hair was a wild dye job. Nah, here, she born that way. I know. I she's, like, she's a mutant born with skunk hair. She, uh, that, that was one of those things early on where I was like, did you really have to? Yeah, did we have to? Yeah, did, is that, <laughs> this, ain't, this isn't me being a cannon queen and going like, man, that's not how it was. I was just like... <laughs> This wasn't necessary. No, what it, this was not necessary for her to do that. She, I was like, God damn it, y'all. You know, we just barely in here, and we already <laughs> pulling this shit. She's she's born that way. Yeah. You know, she she's you know she was born a freak, so that <laughs> society like that's that's the movie's way of saying. See, society never gave her a chance. Right. They're trying to already get some cheap sympathy. First, <laughs> they're trying to keep get some cheap sympathy and get that money by putting in the look immediately. They're like, God damn, y'all, we we <laughs> it just opened up. <laughs> let's let's not start out like this. God damn, we had a perfectly. Goddamn good reason for the hair. She's a fashion queen. Exactly. You know, she's, she dyed her hair. What is wrong with just keeping her hair dyed? You're killing me. <laughs> and we still got two hours and eight minutes to go. You're killing me here. Well, it also means that because <laughs> as uh, Cruella goes through so much of the movie wearing a red wig, so Emma Stone has to wear a wig on top of a wig. <laughs> yeah. To cover her goddamn, <laughs> yeah, she's wearing that red wig, that red wig right there to cover up her two faced hair yeah. <laughs> that she got. And this is like, you know, do you know how bad this is, people? It's like, you know what? <clears throat> it, the, the, there was a perfectly good, a perfectly good reason for it. 
then they could have fit it into this movie in a way that felt natural. But no, they said, no, nah, that's not stupid enough. Y'all know, to, for her to be born with the hair, that's like that's like Darth Vader being f- born with the helmet already, you know? <laughs> You can wait. Yeah. Just yeah. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just let just let it unfold. I was really when they showed her hair like this. I, I, I was like the movie. Like why are you pushing me? Shit. You're not gonna get there. I initially thought it was that. Well, she's a precocious child because she is, and and that was her way of like she's like she's punk rock. I mean I know yeah. it's, it's late '60s, but she's punk for that time. And they're like, nope, she was born with it. It's like oh, gosh. Yeah. It God was, damn. It was so much more interesting when. You weren't trying to make it interesting. You think that's dumb. Don't even ask about the origin of why she hates Dalmatians. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's, don't, don't even ask about the dogs in here, man. She because Let me just say this. I'll put it this way. You want to know how dumb this is? I'll just say this. Her and Batman got a lot in common. Yeah. When they shouldn't. Her origin story depends on and her on her being angry at Dalmatians, and it's best that you don't ask. Just see it for yourself. You and the, the best part of seeing it for yourself, the, the best thing I could say about it, you might laugh out loud like I did. Uh, did you laugh out loud? I, like, yeah. I, I was shocked. I was like, they just did that. I, yeah. I can't believe they just did that. That's why I laughed. I was like, I know you did. You motherfucker. <laughs> y'all, are, y'all are stupid. This is crazy. I was like, I know you did not Batman this shit right now. <laughs> y'all crying mad like these dogs right here. What the fuck? <laughs> let's talk about, hey, I ain't done you. Let's talk about horse, good old horse and Jasper. Yeah, those, those two guys bumbling uh, thieves she hired yeah. for a, a few jobs. Yeah, her henchmen. Her henchman. Horace and Jasper. Yeah, you you talking about the two drunks that she that she just hired from the local pub down the street because she's cheap? Nah, man. Guess what though? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, <nah>, they <laughs> with this. <laughs> no, nah, with this they pull they pull, and I'm not lying, y'all. Because I'm looking at this, it's people really. It's not just that Horace and Jasper were the two drunk stupid ass henchman that she got from the pub down the street just to pull a quick job. Now they were the they, they were also the henchman that she used to beat the shit out mm-hmm. of. She abused. Look at that. They scared as fuck to her. Look at that. She slapped them so hard they, their hat spun around. Did the hat spin around? <laughs> I got to see that shit again. She ain't. This is why I hate Cruella, but respect. Respect. Cruella ain't f-ing around. <laughs> Say that shit again. <laughs> Say that shit one more goddamn time. Man, even Morgan Freeman be like, well, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> So what they do here? Oh shit! Well, this is the new Horace and Jasper. Tell me, they must be grimier. They must be more hood, and they must be gangster. No, nah, they going on some Fast and Furious shit. They family. No bullshit, people. They all friends. Childhood they, friends. Childhood friends where they adopted each other off the streets yeah. and grew up together. They had a little rascals almost. Yeah, 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 it's a whole like, well, you can't hate them because they were all orphans just doing the best they could. Yeah. Yeah, no, they oh. they are straight up family. Where they get along with each other, they love each other, you know. It's like, nah, man. Nah, nah. These are these these are two these are two thugs <laughs> that you heard you you heard on the on the download. They, they, there's two guys. They'll, they're desperate enough that they'll do some cheap shit just for a drink. <laughs> 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 they'll even kill puppies. Well, it's funny because throughout that movie, they keep talking about like, yeah, she's supposed to pay us, and we ain't got paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you gonna say something to her? Oh, they just hood uh, shit, man. Well, Corey, you're doing that thing, man. You're, you're comparing it to. The original. Well, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm, like I said, can I separate it from the original? I I can. 
I can very much separate this from the original. But I do have to point out to the original saying, well, this is where they actually did better storytelling. Yeah. You know, Yo, you do. No, no, absolutely. You're, you're, you're doing here where you're explaining a little bit too much. Even for a movie on its own, I hate when movies try to connect each other uh, to the point where it's almost insulting to the audience. Yeah. It's like, all right, some of this is way too much of a coincidence. But I will say this. I think it works. It's funnier and it works better where you have where you have uh, these guys just being hoods. But also, on the flip on the flip side, I will say that it's if you're going to do something and you're going to try to make it different from the original, one of the things that you can do is, are take minor characters and make them more sure. supporting characters, yeah, or yeah, more or more up. main characters. Mm -hmm. And only and the, and the reason why I'm not I'm the only criticism that I have is that it's just not as it's just not as well written. But the characters, are they a little better this time? Uh, it depends on what you're saying. They do have some great actors here. Uh, Jasper is played by Joel Fry. He's the tall one. And American actor Paul Walter Hauser plays Horace. And they, listen, they, if if you want to have them, can you hear this dog squeaking yeah, over here? I can, I can. <laughs> she, she's, she, is she dreaming? She, she heard us talking about Cruella DeVille and she just started <laughs> having nightmares. <laughs> my, my dog is actually running from Cruella right now. <laughs> Nah, I, I, it's it's a different story, and those actors are good. I actually like them, uh, and and their story is a little it's a little bit a little bit better in here. I mean, it's more for them to do. Yeah, it, it yeah, it's 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 a little hard to separate in as much as we know what we know and how well that worked. And here they get more, and it's fine. You're right. The, yeah. the, the actors are likable enough, uh, albeit the fact that so much of this just feels forced. Yeah, but I, you know, I tell you what the deal is, and I tell you what went wrong with me, as far as Jasper and Horace, and it wasn't even, wasn't even poor old Jasper and Horace's fault, man, because I like them. If you want to make them more likable characters, hey, that could even, that could probably lead to even more tragedy, or it could explain something with their relationships. But I tell you, I like them. I tell you what, where things went wrong with them. It's not even their fault in a little bit. Uh, and look. You know, there are some things that they that they did that I did like. Uh, I like that they explained her name, Corella Deville. Mm -hmm, I was sure. like, all right, you know what, Corella Deville, Corella Devil, even in the original, which I have no problem with. But yeah, that's a little bit too on the nose. If you want to explain it in the movie how she got the name, and I thought that was one of the few things where I said, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, conceptually, I I, I like that. Once I was able to separate this from the original, once we were actually on grounds where this was kind of being more of its own thing. I did like it better. You know, the story being an origin story, that was cool. I also like that this is mostly a revenge story. This is almost like this is this is a this is a, a a Hannibal and also a wicked situation where it's not so much about how she became evil in a way as it is where she's getting back at somebody who because this is what they do because once Hannibal Lecter became a big character you know once they made decide to do this spin on Wizard of Oz with Wicked you're following an evil character some evil ass character and you can't they, they, they know like oh well shit we can't make we, we can't make a villain or evil person something you want to follow through the whole movie you gotta because we're pretty much making them the protagonist how do you do that you add someone who's a bigger asshole in the movie. Sure, sure. And that's what they do here. And that person is the Baroness, who I say is played very well by uh, by Emma, uh, Emma, uh, Emma Thompson. I'm, I'm Emma Thompson. Oh, well, that. that's the thing. The, the movie is the best when it's Emma versus Emma. And, and it's got a whole Devil's Wear sure Prada is. thing that, you know, I would uh, say, I mean, it's clearly like they, <clears throat> they took notes watching that movie. Oh, hell yeah. Even down to Mark Strong being the, the Stanley Tucci character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, nah, the devil don't wear Prada. The devil wears whatever this motherfucker's wearing. <laughs> yeah. She, I will give them, I will give them credit here for making a villain where it says, damn, you actually top Cruella de Vil. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you ain't bashing puppies on the head, but Jesus, you're a shitty person. Only because she hadn't thought of it yet. Yeah, <laughs> and give her time. She'll, she'll make a coat out of human babies that mm -hmm. she can't. Yeah, yeah, Emma, Emma Watson, man. Oh, God damn, Thompson, shit. Yeah, yeah, too many, too many of these Emmas. It's too many of these British ass Emmas up mm -hmm. in here too. It is no, you're right, man. When they're trying to out fashion each other, mm -hmm. that shit is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it works here is because uh, Emma Thompson is such a shitty person that you you're so happy to see this 
dished back out to her. Mm -hmm. And she gets so upstaged by 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 Cruella, who, as we said before, she became Cruella. She was Ella. And those moments where she just comes in and shows her up, those are some good scenes. You look ravishing, Baroness. Master of understatement. Dear Valide. <laughs> from the Hunger Games collection. Yeah. <laughs> she ran out there on fire. And I'm like, where did she think where, this yeah, was going? We, what was exactly. The, what was the purpose? <laughs> well, f <laughs> <laughs> She tries that shit too. Oh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, those scenes are good, man. Those scenes where they're going after each other are very good, and I like that. Uh, what do you think? Well, you know, let me go ahead and pass this off to you. What are you thinking so far? Uh, I, I'm thinking you're right, and but so much of the star of this movie is the set design and mm -hmm. especially the fashion design. Uh, the, the stuff they come up with for them to to wear and the, and the spectacle here. Now, there's there's a number of scenes like this, and I, I I feel like I'm you know I'm beating the dead horse, but this all feels very Batman too. It's like it feels like something like every Batman movie has some kind of banquet where somebody comes in and crashes it yeah. in, in a big spectacle. A a Emma Thompson is, is is fantastic, and all all her scenes are are good, or especially when it's the two of them. And yeah, and you're watching yeah. Emma Stone play you know her undercover employee, but then switch out to being Cruella. That stuff is good, uh, but I. <laughs> The movie has some major pacing problems because it takes a while to even get to this. I was up and down with this movie because I didn't like the way it really started out. I was laughing at how silly they were trying to force these things together into an origin story. It was ridiculous. It's almost stupid the way they do it. But, man, I got to tell you, I think this thing is directed so well. I love how this movie is directed, man, because there's so many things that are making this movie work as far as the direction. Uh, for one... I think the movie flows well. I think the movie flows well and flows and it's so smooth the way it flows well together because it is so well edited. And the re one of the things that makes it flow so smoothly for me at least is that they know how to use music. There's a lot of music in this movie. And now this movie I think it it might even be early 70s because they take a lot of R&B, they take a lot of funk, they take a lot of Brit rock from the 70s, maybe from the 60s too. And they know how to use the music well to make them to make all these transitions. They make these great tra music transitions here. Because a lot of directors take music and they use it to just, as a crutch to make the scene look cooler or they're applying a lot of slow motion. They use music here to transition between other scenes. Or the music seems very appropriate. The music is meant to act to accent certain things, not just because oh we got the rights to my favorite songs and it looks cool right here. The soundtrack it, itself is great. I love all the music right here, uh, you know, and it helps that this is be, it, it's it's a period piece. You know that soundtrack is influenced by the period piece of this being seventies uh, mod London. You know uh, the cinematography really benefits from this being a period piece. Uh, as you were saying, you know, the fashion in this, they do a lot here with these outfits that I love. There's a scene that that where, you know, I don't want to, like, again, I don't want to spoil too much for you, but they they got so many creative scenes here that they do with with uh, with with fashion and, and and wardrobe design. There's a scene that where Cruella does something with trash that I thought was, geez, that looks like Joker also. <laughs> Yes, it does. <laughs> but there's something that she does with trash, and he just find all these imaginative, imaginative ways for for Cruella to like one up the Baroness. That is, uh, that is uh, Emma, Emma, Thompson. Emma Thompson's uh, character. You no, know, right the there. thing that she does with trash that's something where you could see Lady Gaga going, "Shit, God gonna damn do it!" That. <laughs> Cinematography captures this period piece very well. You know, art direction is very good here. You know, it's. Uh, it's it's very much something where it's 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 this movie's own version of seventies uh, mod London, but uh, without going you know too crazy like sometimes like a Tim Burton movie would. Uh, and also the thing that I admired the most is that this is a family film, 
very much is a family film. You're going to wonder what is in this movie unless, I don't know, unless you just somebody who don't like gay people are, you know, if you if your kid watches this movie, well, I, you know, Corella ain't going to make my child gay because there's a major gay they, character they, in they here. Are, they, they are crowing about, it is the first openly gay Disney character is it? ever. I, I think people are pointing out like, no, it's not. No, it's not. And if it, even if it, no, even it's it not. Is, but it's not something to like go like, look what we've done. It is not. It's Goddamn like, Gaston's friend in the live action version was, oh, dan- right. was dancing with a f- man. Shut the f- up. Yeah, yeah. No. no, it is yeah. not. Yes, but then it's time of being woke. We need to show what, what the progress. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, if you want, okay, maybe you want, maybe he's the most flamboyant motherfucker that they've had, but he ain't the first yeah. openly gay. He might be the first openly gay that got to be open for most of the movie. <laughs> well, plus he's flamboyant, but it's not like you see him kiss another dude. Stop. Stop. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, but the movie, by all means, is a family film. What I like about it, though, is that this is directed with the coolness and style of a something that we associate with a more mature film. There's some goofy stuff in there, but it's not whimsical because it's a kid's movie. They went in there and just said, we want to make the coolest movie or at least the coolest looking movie that we can. And I got that, that, that feeling from it. I agree with you, but I don't. In, in as much as so much of what you're talking about, the, mm-hmm. the, the look, the style, uh, art direction, you know, uh, costume design, all that. Um, in-house uh, and the cinematography, all that is, is is really a cut above for something like this. I, I agree with all that. Uh, I disagree with you about the pacing. In conjunction with the music, because I, I was not digging the way the music was handled in this. I mean, it's a great soundtrack, but the it steps on a lot of what's going on, or it's there to cover up the fact that they haven't really written good stuff for it. I disagree completely about the music. And maybe it's because I saw a, a, a screener at home. And, be, and, and it also could be that I just saw Sucker Punch. Yeah. And I saw how music was just used to make something look cool. It was flowing well. And I like its flow. But it was too goddamn long. You know, it's like, I remember I went tubing. I went tubing on the river around here. It's where you get getting a tube, people, and you just float on the river all day. And the water was nice. So I was floating along. And it got to about hour five, and I was like, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the water is nice. It's uh-huh, flowing very uh-huh. well, but I've been in here too long, uh-huh, man. Uh-huh. You know, I'm getting sunburned. <laughs> it's yeah. So, yeah, man, I didn't. I, I don't think, I agree with you. It, doesn't need, it does not need to be as long as it is, man. I'm, I, I don't think that that's necessary at all. And I'm going to tell you something else, man. I, and you, you know, I'll tell you this, too. I think it falls apart when they're trying to connect too much even when it goes beyond the original. Uh, but again, some of that could depend on how you disconnect this from the original because they make some of these characters and attempt to like make them something you want to follow and root for in the film. They make them maybe too too likable. Like I said, Horace and Jasper, I'm fine with them. If you're looking at the original though, so the, in the original, these are two guys. And let me find this right here. Uh, In the original uh, uh, 101 Dalmatians, Horace and Jasper, they were, they were not only dicks, they were just, they really were cruel and evil, man. Yeah. Like, there's a scene, if you don't remember the movie, or if you do, there's a scene where Horace and Jasper are walking around with crowbars (laughs) ready to beat the (laughs) shit out these dogs. Yeah, puppies. Dog ain't stupid. Yeah, puppies, come on. Now. The the pup is like, maybe if you had the fucking <laughs> the pipe, the long ass <laughs> pipe from behind your back, which I clearly see you with, and clearly see you want to beat my ass, maybe, maybe I might trust you. With that evil ass smile. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, that oh look at that shit, man. His eyes look, glowing in the look dark. Look how look how look how crazy this fool is. Yeah. Why would anybody <laughs> trust that? <laughs> That's why they got hired in the first place. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, because these are two lowlifes who'll do anything. Yeah. So you two willing to beat puppies? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do that shit for free. <laughs> That's right, mom. Yeah. <laughs> two shillings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a drink, man, and I'll beat the fuck out of anything you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> that fool might be Jack the Ripper, you know? <laughs> Yeah, man. But, man, you can't. There's no way that you look at Horace and, and and Jasper in this movie. There's no way you say that they could ever beat puppies. No, they're too they're, they're too they're, kind. They're, they're too soft. Yeah, they're too soft. Yeah. I mean, even with her, they're soft. I mean, I mean, 
Jasper's always moaning uh, 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 about uh, Cruella, like like he's got a crush on her. Like, yeah. Oh no, I feel like what you're doing is wrong, and <laughs> you're not like you used to be. You remember back in the day when we were pals? She won't fuck you, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're fat. <laughs> And I don't know how you feel. You might feel differently. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like Corella just flipped? I, I was just gonna, <laughs> actually, I was just going to bring that up. I was like, as soon as you get done saying your next point, I was going to bring how she flipped. How she's one person, and then in the middle of a movie, they go like, oh, no. Now she needs to be the Cruella that we know who's evil. And then she goes like, oh, wait, no. I got to like make, make people like me, so I'm going to go it, back. Yeah. And with no explanation. Yeah, there, there are moments where the next scene... They even have one moment where they actually they show it where she has to turn around. She's pretty much looking at the audience and there's no real lead up. But she lets the audience know I'm Cruella. Anita, darling, my dove. It's not Estella. That's the past. I'm Cruella. That's okay. stupid. <laughs> what are you nine? <laughs> She's like, girl, if you don't get the fuck out of my out of my desk, get out this office. Yeah, you're right. Oh, is Halloween right around the corner? I didn't even realize. <laughs> or were you going to Alice in Wonderland theme yeah. party? <laughs> yeah. Everybody are looking like, looking at me like I'm crazy because I let the goddamn joke up in it. <laughs> yeah, that scene is where this really is my my Cruella coming out. Yeah. And I was like, uh, there was really no lead up to that. And the reason why. That did not work to me for work for me is because after that, she goes and she starts being different to Jasper and Horace. Yeah. Where they were where they were all family, they were all supporting each other. All of a sudden, because she's taking on this persona, she just flips and starts beating the shit out of them. Well, not beating them, she's leading up to it. But she because we have to get to that point, we see the dynamic from the original mm-hmm. here. She just all of a sudden starts treating them like shit. Yeah. For no with no real lead up to mm-hmm. it. You know, I could even see if they had done something where she was becoming this character and they were like, you know, you don't have to go this far. And she's like, y'all never support me. You're never doing anything to be on to be on my side. You know, you see this woman is trying to destroy us. And, you know, if you're not going to do that, are you going to help me or not? They don't really have moments like no, that. No, they don't. It, it's just it's just a, a light switch. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like her hair. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's black on, on one day and white on the next. Yeah. They make these characters exaggerated, and they make it to the point where they're goofy. Yeah. You know, they have these ex- exaggerated reactions, like when something goes wrong in a room, you always have guys like, oh, you know, and it's like, man, all right, you know, that's, that's, I, I don't mind that, but the movie was doing so well with, without having to do that, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you had to pull that out. So this is where the whimsical side of the family movie comes in that you guys felt like you weren't going to be. So, but I don't know, man. Somebody said she might be bipolar. Well, yeah, she could be. Hey, it's the '70s, so maybe it wasn't examined yet. Uh, yeah, I don't know. that would be a word for it. But uh, you know, that's the kind of thing you you kind of say something about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's true. I, you know, I, I, it also makes no sense. I'll just say this much with this movie right here. Without spoiling anything, how can you report a death when there's no body? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. I, I'm just, I, yeah, everything, the, the big wrap up at the end, you're like, I, even, is this one of these where I don't get to call out how this doesn't add up? It was but, even earlier than that. How are you going to report all over the news about a death when there's nobody to be found yeah, for anybody? Yeah. You know, they didn't believe me. There's a scene where they just talk about. Oh. It, a, yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, no, I know what you're saying. But I also thought about that. But I was like, well, this death happens over a cliff into the sea. No, it's not even that. No, I'm talking about oh. something different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to say too much. I'm not yeah. I'm not going into details, but no, it's it's because there's two deaths like that. Yeah, so uh yeah, I'm just saying, y'all. I'm not even I am not giving any details because I don't want to spoil anything from some for anybody, but I'm just saying how are you gonna report on this when there's nothing? And it's in the news. It's all making big news. But anyway. Hmm. Uh, it, let me just say it's a situation where a body should be reported yeah um, you know I, I they, they got they, something that they did here that I thought was kind of cool they got uh, they got two two dogs in here and it's not because I'm a dog person it's because they got pretty much two 
the equivalent of the cartoon mascots you see all the time in a mm-hmm. Disney film. And I thought I was going to be annoyed by that. And I, I wasn't. I, I like them. I actually liked them. They got two dogs. One named, oh, they got one with one eye that wears an eye patch. That's what I thought. Like, oh, Jesus, really? And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I like that dog. Yeah, I like that dog, too. They, were not, they, were, they weren't obnoxious. No, no. They, you know what? They, they didn't take over. When they had a job to do, they were actually more competent than their owners. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, no, that's true. That is true. Uh, I would say that the movie works best. The movie works best when it's being its own thing, except when they start referencing the original in ways that do feel forced. And they do manage to reference the original in ways that, that feel that feel fine. There's a couple of things. One, you know, they do a they do a direct callback to Corella DeVille's crazy ass driving in this. Okay, that was one of the ones where I was like, this is not necessary. Yeah, see, I didn't mind that because that one felt natural to me. That was where, she, you know, they showed in the trailer, she just hot wired a car and just went crazy. And it's like, all right, well, you know, you the thing is you can watch this movie and be like, this feels part of the story. Mm-hmm. Or you can notice that it does reference the the, the original. Hey, quick, you're a dog. Oh, I don't. I just love in the original how she's a bad driver just because nobody tells her that she is and she's reckless and it's a part of her not giving a shit. There was a dude in my in maybe I just love this scene. I didn't mind seeing in the in the in this one here because there's a scene where a dude even looks at a trait like crazy bitch, what are you doing? You remember that? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) <laughs> She's trying to kill him. Yeah. I'll show your ass crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's not crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ran his ass off the road. Yes. <laughs> Look at it. What the hell is wrong with this bro? <laughs> he got away. He's trying to drive with his feet in his hands. When it started out, it was laughably silly. And I didn't know how much I was going to like this. And then as I got into it, I really, really started to enjoy it. I really started to like it. Not just like it. I liked it a lot. I was having a good time. But this is where you end up running into a problem, running into a problem when you have a two-hour running time for a movie that doesn't need it. Two hour plus. Two, yeah, two hour. Yeah, the, with the credits, I think that this is two hours, two and, hours and 13. Is, yeah, is it, I think, yeah, I think it's two hours and 13 minutes. And I have to say that I liked it less as it went along. You know, fell into the trappings of trying to cram in too much story and it increases that as it goes along. And a lot of it is either in the form of we have this movie here, we're trying to do some clever twist and we're just forcing that too much or, hey, recognize this. So between those two things, it really it was a it was a a situation of uh, lows in in, in one peak, (laughs) you know, when it started low, it peaked at one moment and then didn't go as low as before, but it did dip for me. Uh, It was a matinee at one point. I was like, well, you know, maybe I need to shave off and give this a low matinee. And then at the end of it, I was like, man, I really want to like this. I do. And I'm trying my best because there's a lot of things that I love that they're doing here. But the way that this, this whole thing, just as I said before, just feels kind of disingenuous where it really does not have to be. Y'all didn't have to do that. I I don't mind this concept. You had something. I had to end up giving it a high rental. Uh yeah, that I I um I mean, look, it, as far as the the look and the style of it and you just wanting to see something in the theater, you know, I it could warrant that. Uh but for me, I I mean, as laughable as it was, I thought it was a bold choice they did in the beginning. I was like, wow, I expect this. It immediately lost momentum when they got to meeting young Horace and Jasper because they hired the two worst kid actors you could ever get. Um, but I just found like so much of the middle of it was where it was losing me, where I was like, man, this is so underdeveloped. It's the the last half of it that, that I think is where it finds its footing and it knows what it wants to do. But... It wears out its welcome. It's it's yeah. it's been there too long, and even in the in the half I liked, it gets repetitive. And considering that they got a big twist coming up, I was like, man, you this really needs some economy so we can stay focused on what what's working and what's important here. Yeah, it's just a regular uh, rental. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's the difference. Like I actually like this. I do, I do. But I only 
only I like it mostly in parts. Yes, you know? yeah, I felt the same way. I'm like, yeah. there's, there's pieces. And, the, and I guess maybe the thing that separated me from a high, I mean, you're a rental, I'm a high rental. I yeah. guess it's the difference between, you know, I don't know how it would have felt watching this in a theater, but I, you know, I, 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 I liked enough of it at home to make it feel like I didn't feel like it was a waste of time for me. The parts that I did enjoy, and there's a lot that I do enjoy here. I think the difference is you didn't like the middle too much. The middle was my favorite part going on here. I will tell you this about race swapping. Yes. If you're going to race swap, man, do that shit right. Y'all, they got brothers in this movie and it's the 60s or 70s or whatever. What made me mad, y'all gave these brothers some bad Afro wigs. <laughs> and I can tell a lot of people have wigs in this and their wigs looks nice. You know, it's a movie about style and these are the most unstylish ass Afro wigs. These Afro wigs, were, they were all lumpy. Yeah. They were all crooked. They were all <laughs> flicked looking at bumps and shit. One dude had the fucking, uh, he had an Afro look like a goddamn Frankenstein head. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, you got to give these brothers some better... So better y'all didn't give a fuck about these black people. You handed out hair. Yeah. Shit, your Tyler Perry, Perry. would have gave out better wigs than what y'all did here. All right, you know better than that. <laughs> no, it's a goddamn shame when Tyler Perry can give you a better afro than Disney. And they both got money. And the only reason why I think her hair is looking good because it might be natural, or she got, a, or she, I think her hair is natural. Yeah. I, every time I see that actress, her hair is like that. Or she's got a, or, or she got an afro that's attached to the headband right there. <laughs> I wish I could watch it with y'all so we could just do a drinking game. Every time we saw a flicked ass afro in this, we take a shot. There's a lot of ugly ass afros. Y'all watch this shit and report back to me and let me know. The best afro belongs to the one that's probably real. And the rest of them, they were just looking at people and they like, put that shit on. You're right. <laughs> this is the best one. Yeah, that's what we got. So. Yeah. Shit, it look like they got goddamn lint from the dryer and put it on people's heads. Shut the fuck up, man. Stop. <laughs> you know, I ought to take a point off for that. <laughs> for the messed up afros y'all put in there. <laughs> and those are facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>